Welcome back to DGPS News Flash. This is where we bring you the latest news in a flash, inform you about how it affects you and make you think. I am Zayn from Three Brain, and I am Elise from Three Brain. Wow, Elise, it has been a long time since we last met. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. And how about you? I'm excited to come back to school and meet my friends again after two months of staying home and staying safe. In other words, during this circuit breaker period. That's right. Actually, we would like to thank all of you by staying home for the past two months and wearing a mask or shield when you step out of the house. You are actually helping to keep Singapore safe. That's right. With your help, the number of local cases who are infected with COVID-19 has decreased during this circuit breaker period. That's a good sign for Singapore. But remember, this does not mean that we can start to not follow the circuit breaker measures. We cannot afford to be complacent. I agree. Please continue to follow the measures so that the number of infected cases continues to remain low. Today's news flash will be a little different. We are not focusing on one news article only. Instead, we have used information from a few articles to share the negatives and the positives that happened during this second week of period. Let's begin. On 18th May 2020, three men were charged for breaking the circuit breaker measures. They left their homes without a reasonable explanation and they met up with people from another household for social reasons. They left their homes to meet at Pasiris Park Car Park and kayak to check Jawa wetlands at Pulau Ubin. Two of them even went fishing at Chek Jawa, which is not allowed. They also set up shelter and they campfires there. They can be jailed for up to six months, fined up to $10,000, or both for not following the circuit breaker measures. They can also be fined for up to $7,000 for fishing and setting up of shelter and campfires. On 22nd May 2020, a woman was charged for breaking the circuit breaker measures too. She also left her home without a reasonable explanation and met up with people from an and met up with someone from another household for social purposes. She was also not wearing her mask properly as it did not cover her nose and mouth. She can be jailed for up to six months, fined up to $10,000 or both. Why are people charged with heavy penalties if they did not follow the rules? Well, it shows how serious the government is in reminding people to practice social distancing and good personal hygiene habits. Remember, you should not meet friends from another household to chit-chat with them. Since people can be infected with the virus even before they show any symptoms, it is very important to stay away from them. Yes, we need to be responsible in protecting our family and living in the same house as us, especially if we have elderly living with us. We can always use the phone to call, message, or even email those who we miss during this period. That's right. We must also remember to wear our masks properly to keep any droplets form when we sneeze or cough to ourselves. Well, how do these articles affect us? It serves as a reminder for us to take these circuit breaker measures seriously. The government warned us that the number of infected cases might rise once the circuit breaker measures are lifted bit by bit. The World Health Organization has also warned us about a second wave of the COVID-19 outbreak in a country if measures to control the spread of the virus are lifted too soon. Let's watch a video. Uh, when we speak about a second wave classically, what we often mean is that there will be a first wave of the disease by itself effectively goes to a very low level and then occurs a number of months later. But we're concerned about when that may be a reality for, for many countries uh, in a number of months' time. But we need to be also cognizant of the fact that the disease can jump up at any time. 
Uh, we, we, we cannot make assumptions that just because the disease is on the way down now, that it's, on a, it's, on, it's going to keep going down and we're going to get a number of months to get ready for a second wave. We may get a second peak in this wave. This happens during pandemics in the past. It certainly happened in the pandemic uh, 1919 and the Spanish flu. Uh, we, we got a second peak, not necessarily a second wave. Uh, when we speak about it. Now I understand. So that's why our government is lifting the socket breakup measures in three phases or stages. That's right. Now let's move on to something more heartening that arose during this period of uncertainty. Yes, when I read this article, I was very touched. It's about how neighbors are keeping the kampong spirit alive during this period. Kampong spirit means having people coming together to help someone in need. Residents have been receiving risky food deliveries. There would be a knock on the door. When they opened the door, there was no one there, but there was food. That's a very thoughtful thing to do. I read that some even cook for their neighbors and friends, including two doctors, and deliver to them. That's nice of them, showing appreciation to others, especially the frontline workers. Yes. Some even bought grocery items for their elderly neighbors so that they do not need to leave their houses. Why did this kampong spirit come about? Actually, the kampong spirit has been there all along. Before this circuit breaker, these neighbors already have a strong relationship with one another. They usually visited one another to meet and eat together. It's amazing how, even with the circuit breaker measures, they are able to find other ways to show their love and support for their neighbours. It really goes to show that when there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. It's like the Greek philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. That's the quote of the day. So how does this article affect us? Well, it serves as a reminder that even though we have to practice social distancing, we can still make others happy. It can be through food, through a message, or offering to buy something for that person. That's true. And that, in turn, it'll make us happy. So what have we learned for today? The circuit breaker measures introduced have changed our lifestyles. We might be upset about this, and we might be tempted to break the rules. But before we do that, remember why these measures were introduced in the first place. It's for the safety of our loved ones and the people in our country. Do we still choose to not follow these measures because they respect us? Or are we going to choose the option where we can learn to adapt to what is happening around us and stay positive? It's our choice to make. Now let's move on to citizenship dispositions. This whole situation gives me a sense of belonging as it shows how important it is for everyone to cooperate to keep Singapore safe. It gives me a sense of reality as we need to adapt quickly and know that we might not be able to go back to our previous lifestyle anytime soon. It gives me a sense of hope knowing that the government and its people have demonstrated resilience to overcome this situation. It gives me a will to act in ensuring that I and my family members follow closely to the circuit breaker measures. Well, this whole situation also reminds me to always portray our BGPS values. That's right, we need to show integrity, meaning to behave ourselves even when no one is watching. We also need to res be responsible by following the measures set by the government. We also need to show resilience that we are able to stay strong when facing challenges. And we, need, and we also need to have compassion by remembering to show care and concern for others, even when social distancing. With that, we have come to the end of BGPS News Flash. Thank you, and we will see you next week. Stay safe, everyone! Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to week two of the three. I hope the P1s 
two P3s today. They are coming to school after quite some time and they will do, they will look forward to, to see the teachers and the friends. So welcome P1 to P3s and the rest of the P4s and P5s to at home today to do home-based learning. Today, I have a story entitled The Farmer, the Huntsman and the Woodsman. Long time ago, in Siena, Italy, there was this farmer. He has a rich estate and he has five sons and they didn't work very hard. They were quite lazy, lazing around in the farm and the farm. But the father was really working very hard, toiling day and night. And one day at his bedside, he looked very sickly. He called all his five sons. Sons, I do not have many months leave, many months left. I think I have to tell you something. It's a big secret about our estate. The five sons grew excited and sprightly, so unlike their usual self. What happened was the father was so weak. He spoke very softly and very meekly. Actually, there is a hidden treasure at the farm. But I do not know where the hidden treasure is. Oh, the son, when he, they heard the hidden treasure, they were so excited, more so than looking after the sick father. And they asked, where's the treasure? Where's the treasure? The father said, it's somewhere in the estate, in the farm. Somewhere, I'm not sure. I don't know where the exact spot is. But what you need to do is, you need to work very hard and I shall give you the spade and the right set to work really hard day in, day out to find where the hidden treasure is. And he gave the special spade, the special rate to the sons. And a few months went by. The five sons worked really, really hard on the farm and a few months passed by and the father had his last breath but what is amazing is that the land grew healthy for us one by one they harvest they harvest the crop each different type of crop and they are so happy because the land yields far better than the lands of the neighbor. It was such a bountiful crop. And hence, they realized that there was indeed no hidden treasure. The treasure lies in yourself, your self-reliance. And hence, boys and girls, last week for the lower primary, Mr. Lowe, the year head for lower primary, spoke about the value of responsibility. So in essence of the value of responsibility, one of the key elements is self-reliant. We should not depend on others to achieve our goals. We must work really hard. We must not depend on your parents to do housework. You must not depend so much on your helper to do housework. You must learn to do all these things, learn all the skills that you need to help yourself and also to grow into a better person, to learn how to do things on your own so that you are not heavily dependent on others. And like what we are experiencing now, we have some challenges. If you are self-reliant, and you learn the skills on learning, you will be, you will feel better, you will overcome these challenges with a good sense of achievement. So I wish you a good learning this week and I wish you well. Take care and stay safe, everyone. See you again.
Right, come boys, can we all stand? All right, hi there. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, this is Mr. Teo here. Okay, today I'm here to lead uh, together with our student helpers, okay, with the 5BX. Of course, you see today our group is slightly bigger, so we have some of our new P4 and P5 who's joining us today. Okay, so I hope uh, you have already washed up and brush your teeth. So now we can do a simple stretching and light cardio, okay, before you start your HBL for today. Okay, so first up, okay, we're just going to do a very light job. Okay, so all of you, uh, for some of the boys, you can remove the mask if you would like to. Okay, and if you want to put it on, it's fine. Okay, okay so can you just follow me and do a light jog on the spot? Okay, those at home as well, just follow me. Okay, just lift your knees slightly. Okay, let's go left and right. Okay, jog on the body spot for those who are here. Okay, now we can go a little bit faster. Okay, and slow down a little bit. Okay, next, we are going to try doing this thing called high knee. Okay, so we're going to lift up our knees. We can place our hands in front of us at our stomach level. Okay, okay and then as I say high knee, we'll lift up our knees. Okay, ready? High knee. Okay, lift up your knees. Make sure you can touch your hand. Keep going for 10 seconds. Try to land on the ball of your feet. Okay, slow it down. And relax. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Now, next activity that we're going to do. Okay, hold on. All right, we're going to do this thing called lunges. Okay, we're going to go slow. All right, when I say go, you start off with the right foot forwards. Okay, try to stretch your hamstring. Okay, so you try to reach out as you stretch out your right foot, your right leg. Okay, ready? One, two, go. Okay. Let's try with our left. Okay, as you stretch forward, you can feel a little bit of strain on your thighs as well as your hamstring, which is the back of the leg. Okay, try to keep your balance. Okay, two more repetitions. Left and back. Last rep, right and the left. Okay, well done, All right. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna get my P6 helpers. Okay, so Shane will start off first to lead us with the rest of the step that we're on the spot. Okay, all right. So what are you gonna do? Yes. So. Come to say, please take over. The first exercise is here. Your left. For 15 counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Now on the right. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen fourteen, fifteen. Now to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Up to the right. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. For the second exercise, it's arm rotation. It comes. Arm rotation. Keep going. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Right. The third exercise is hip rotation. Eight counts. The hip rotation. Legs apart. Okay. One, One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then count that. Okay. The other way. Are we going? Okay. Let's go. Two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you. So for the fourth exercise is uh, jumping jacks for eight, eight times. Jumping jacks, eight counts. Okay, ready? And begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Is that right? And the last activity that we have? Yeah, last activity we have uh, skate scooter, eight, eight counts. Skate scooter. 
How do we do it? Okay, hold on. Uh. Just a demo. Okay, just stretch out, right? Okay, ready? And we begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's try one more time. Okay, I quite like this. Try to stretch out the legs again. Okay, ready? And begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, student volunteers. All right, so that's all we have for today for your 5BX, of course, at any time of the day, all right, if you feel like moving, it's good to move around even at home, okay? You can pick up some of the cardio workout that the P teachers have taught you last week, okay, and you can try that at home, okay? With that, all right, have a good week ahead to all of you. All right, thank you. Okay, good job. Can you open your mouth before you move? Put on your mouth first. Okay, that's fine.